Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity on reporting on the GIGOS DOI Working Group. DOI Working Group stands for Working Group on Using Digital Object Identifiers for Geodetic Datasets. And we are meeting since almost two years to discuss um, best practices and strategies for the consistent implementation of using digital object identifiers across all IAG services and in the greater geodetic community. This is the mission that was given by given us in the in the first in the first meeting. And uh, we usually meet well, we try to meet every second month. We had now a longer pause, but we'll have a next meeting in two weeks' time. Um, the group includes 20 official members, which is the, the rules for G uh, GIGOS working groups, plus uh, an increasing number of associate members, and they are representing all IAG services and larger data centers that are using DOIs for their services. And why are we speaking for, uh, about DOIs at all? Um, I think if I, if I take a look at geodetic data, um, I see lots of standards and many, many products are highly standardized on an international basis. So what shall DOIs bring in addition and what, why are, why are we speaking about them? Well, for me, they are somehow a direct pathway for making data fair. Um, fair is one of these um, buzzwords in the data creation world where people aiming, aiming at making data findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable, and also directly interpretable and readable by machines. And this is the challenge. So the DOI, once the data set has a DOI, it is directly accessible and permanently accessible via the DOI link. So you can always find it because the link leads to a URL and once the URL is changing, the link will still lead you to the DOI given that the DOI publisher, the repository or the data center, pays attention on where to put their URLs and if they move the, the data from one URL to another one that they redirect the DOI. Most DOIs link to a landing page um, where, which includes the data and bundled information about the data. With bundled information I mean different types of metadata and also links to documentation or technical notes or anything you know you need to know and which is essential for data reuse. Um, the DOI reference data is not only provided with this DOI link, but also there is machine readable standardized metadata associated to this to this DOI. And this metadata can be exchanged via standard um, application programming interfaces. And therefore it's very easy to to spread the word the word about the existent, like every DOI that is registered in the data center is, exp well, the metadata is exposed via an API and can be harvested by other catalogs, etc. at PP. And all this is very important for data discovery. And a very important thing, and I think this was one of the main motivations for also thinking about this group, is that um, DOI reference data are citable in scholarly literature. It is really possible to, to, to treat data publications like any paper you, you're citing as a source for your results, for your interpretation for anything in your papers. With a citation, you can also track the use of the data and you can get give credit to the researchers and the institutions who have participated in creating this data. <clears throat> Our initial questions were mainly to, of course, to 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 get a, to get an idea of um, what are we, what are we speaking about. We try to classify somehow, but it's of course difficult. Some some geodetic data and products. They are static static data sets, dynamic. We have real time data. We have preliminary products that are not act, only valid for a couple of days or weeks. We then have final products that might appear only weeks after the the measurements and all all kinds of of different data. It is of course important to see who's already using DOIs and for which data, because we definitely don't want to reinvent the wheel. One, the largest challenge still, and has already been identified at the first step is the granularity. Questions like what are the best objects for assigning DOI? Can, shall we assign them to, to stations or to networks, to products? And it was very, very 
firstly, first clear that we need different solutions for for all the different types of geodetic data. Another question was how to find best practicable best practices for citable products. And for this question, you need to also see how the data are used because uh, you can, if you assign DOIs to each data string, you will end up having or uh, requiring the, the users who might use a, a year of data to cite 365 DOIs in a paper, and this is practically not possible. So it always have to reflect how is the usage um, mentality of the data to define any citable product and to to make a suggestion on, okay, for this we might use a network DOI or a product DOI or anything else. And of course, initial question include also geodetic metadata. There are already many standards available. And the question is still, should we try to include DOI related metadata for data, and co data discovery in existing standards or rather keep them separately? And what are the options of the newly developing or there's um, of Geodesy ML, it's a meta language for geodetic data that is currently being developed. We are in contact with the developers, with this Australian group and we will have um, a joint meeting with them as one of our next group meetings. All in all, I think it's important to say that DOIs are always complementary to existing standards and strategies and mainly support data discovery and should definitely not replace any standards that you're already having. One strategy for our group was also to explore um, DOI minting and citation practices from other communities within the geodesy and even beyond for potential adoption or setting examples for for how to how to define our our ideas one was definitely the network dois that was heavily promoted by the seismology community these network dois are mainly for citation purposes and do not refer to individual files and this is this is a, is a very it's a very good practice already and i think there are now more than 150 network dois globally for seismological networks data compilations are uh, another example that we have taken a look at from the, for example, the, the magnetic, observe, uh, magnetic community, from the geomagnetic community. It means that um, you can have um, hierarchical DOIs with one central product on top, and then this product is citing different input products, etc. PP and you can identify the relations between each product via the DUI metadata. An example for this I will show later on is the cost G, where we have already made a practice example. And of course we have, um, we have, hang on, there's something odd. Um, we have um, newly developed ideas like using persistent identifier for instruments or fair digital objects that are, used in some some parts of our groups and are uh, also or in another projects um hang on now i'm stuck here we go our first agreements were quite easy <laughs> we we fully agreed that we prefer duis to product types or observational networks so we are really pleased with the network dui from the seismology and these duis are preferred to duis for individual data files mainly for um reducing the number of DOIs to be cited because having more than 10 DOIs citing, uh, citing uh, the need to cite more than 10, than 10 or 20 DOIs in a paper will definitely exceed at any limit that is possible. And also, once you have a citable solution, it's easier to get credit. Um, <clears throat> we also have agreed that DOIs, some, some, we have some um, some products that are rapidly outdated, for example, rapid or ultra rapid GNSS products or IGS products. And we support assignment of DOIs to these products only if the data are archived for the long term by the data center, which at this point leads to different solutions. We are having DOIs for rapid and ultra rapid products from code and GFZ, but not for ESA products because the ESA is, has decided to not archive these preliminary or rapid changing products for the long term. They only save them for three months and then they are kind of deleted and overwritten. 
and this is what what this is one kind of agreement that we have already taken a second outcome was um, is also now um, implemented for more than a year um, and that is the generation of uh, the development of a new DOI service for ISG GOE models for regional GOE models we have taken a similar approach like using like for ICGEM where they have the global gravitational model models it's a collaboration between the international service for the GOE precisely the Polytechnic Milan and GFZ data services which is GFZ in Potsdam and the um, the collaboration is that GFZ is providing the DOIs you see on the right that is the DOI landing page and the um, data uh, and on the landing page we link back to the to the GOE repository at ISG and of course ISG includes the DOI and the metadata and that directly links to GFZ. So this is a very good implementation and it's it's already very standardized. And we have now, this morning when I took a look, we had 24 DOIs for regional GOE models and I have just received half an hour ago another email from Mirko who sent me the next two models. But the process is very, very standardized and can be very easily done. Um, we also have this um, the the cost G model, which is a concept for DOIs for DOI assignment for hierarchical data products. In this example, for Grace monthly gravity field solutions, um, we have the case that we have five analysis centers that you can see below in Germany, France, Switzerland, Austria, and the U the US that each produce their individual solutions for these monthly time series. And all these solutions contribute to the combination product, which can be also regarded as a best fit product. Um, four of these five um, original solutions from the data centers are already assigned with the DOI. And in addition, we have assigned a new DOI for the combination product, which is what you can see here. Um, in the metadata, we make sure that the um, combination product cites each of the individual of the originating products and also each original product, so each, each product of the analysis center whenever possible. I don't, I have no, I, I could influence the Gravis, the ICGEM and the two ICGEM models. And there we added also, of course, the, the link to the cost G. I did not have any influence on the US part, but we can, we can still speak with them. But it is very important that you have this, this, uh, that the DUI metadata of the combination product includes the citation of all original, all, all original products from the analysis centers and vice versa. And this, um, model was also like we have discussed it and we have shown it and um, it led to some follow-on ideas for example um, this is a slide from Daniela Talla thank you Daniela for allowing me to use it um, that she already presented in in May 2021 during the IRS meeting and there they have agreed to also use this kind of hierarchical processing a pro, um, hierarchical DOI um, for the International Terrestrial Reference Frame 2020, which means that there will be one DOI for each TRF. And this is containing all DOIs that will be then minted for each intra-technique combined contribution. On the author's part, um, that is that... Um, all contributors within the technique services are also co-authors in the DOIs of the techniques combination product. For this latter part, we already have this example from the ITRF 2014, which is the combined IVS contribution for I no for IVS, and it includes about 300 authors. What you can see here, this long, long list within the IVS, all IVS associates and can be cited with the DOI. And this, this idea shall be also ex extended to, to, to all the other techniques of the, IT, of the ITRF uh, components. 
it's very interesting also that we have a new project, or well, not we, it is mainly Karine Brunieu and the Royal Observatory of Belgium. They have got funded, uh, have got funding for a new two years project called Fair GNSS. Um, it's coordinated by the Royal Observatory of Belgium, which is very interesting because they're responsible for UREF and very much involved in EPOS, the European Plate Observing System, and also, of course, of IGS. And their idea is, on one hand, to turn GNSS products into fair digital objects, which makes them connectable and relate. The, the idea is to to make them to to make them linkable with all the other products, and to contribute to the standardization of GNSS data citation, and also to to develop a new open data portal for the European and Belgian GNSS data. And I, I'm a really I'm very much looking forward to to the outcome of these products project because they can also be a a blueprint of what what others in the geodesy or especially in IGS and in GNSS um, can do. Um, actually, ongoing discussion I have already mentioned is about metadata. We are exploring how, well, the, the IGS infrastructure group is currently exploring how to implement geodesy ML in GNSS station metadata. Another question is about can we identify and recommend controlled vocabularies for geodetic data that can either be used within Geo geodesy ML for the more technical description or ideally also with the DOI metadata. And of course, we are discussing of how to include other persistent identifier like the research organization reference, which is a persistent identifier for institutions or ORCIDs for people or FundRef for funding agency in geodetic metadata. For this, we'll have these joint meetings with also the, the geodesy ML group. And of course, the question is always, um, how harmonized are the DOI metadata across the data centers? Is the data set that is assigned with the DOI from GFZ, does it have this a similar type of information or the content of information like DOIs from UNAFCO or from, from Belgium or from any other world? So I think we still have a lot of things to do and to discuss. Um, I think I thank you on one hand, I thank you very much for, for your attention. And I would like to, to, to also refer to a to an interactive um, presentation that we have prepared for the EGU 2021, which is also available on the GIGOS website that Martin just showed. And that I think up to now includes the, or provides the, the most comprehensive um, overview with all different types of, of our working group. Thank you very much. <laughs>